Now I'm going to teach you how to saddle your horse. I'll start with a nice, thick, good quality, clean saddle pad. This is what protects our horse from getting any what we call saddle sores. We notice that it has sort of a front and a back, usually indicated by, by like this, a patch. I want to be sure that I point out many new riders start out with this saddle pad typically too far back. This bony prominence is called the withers, and that's a place where horses are very likely to get saddle sore. So we want to bring that saddle pad well up and covering that area called the wither. When we go to get our saddle, let's keep in mind that this saddle is very heavy. We don't want to just throw it up on the horse. We have to be sure we're careful and do our best to kind of place it up there. I'm going to lift it high, get it in place, and then I'll take a second and make sure everything is lying flat before I just throw it up on her. After that, I look at it and say, is it far enough forward? Is it going to be in its correct place? I want to be sure when the girth or the cinch strap comes up on this side, it's going to be right there behind her elbow. I do need to go now behind and around to the other side, so I'm going to do it carefully by keeping my voice active, talking to her a little bit, hand up on her rump, go close to her, and coming over now to her right side, or what we sometimes call the off side, we can see what we've created as we've placed that saddle on top of her. I need to pull the stirrup out from under and rearrange, organize the straps that we're going to fasten the saddle with. If it's been put away properly, it has a keeper here. And that's an important feature that stores our saddles nice and neat and prevents us or the horse from tripping on the saddle pieces when we're taking them to and from the tack room. I'm going to release this just like any other buckle and I have both pieces fastened together. Now I bring them down, be sure that they lie flat against the horse's side and that they're all in good place. We note that we have a back cinch or what we call a bucking strap and that's just a kind of old term that we use for this. This is not intended to either make or prevent them from bucking. For most of us, this is now just sort of a piece of aesthetic. It's sort of a design feature for the, the custom of the Western saddle. I make sure that my girth is in fact fastened from a metal piece to a metal piece. That may seem very sensible, but I've seen a number of instances in my work where people have fastened this to that or even to a girth to a, a stirrup strap. You can imagine that that wouldn't make this a very safe ride. So we've ensured that everything is in its place, everything is flat, and the last thing I check is, is this singe or this girth going to put this in a nice place centered underneath her body? So this ring needs to be centered here. If it were not that case, then when I get to the other side, I may have to make this adjustment again. So it's much easier for me, it saves me a few steps if I look at all of these pieces while I'm here. If this saddle were on this same horse every day, I may not have to make so many adjustments. But given that we use our saddles on a lot of different horses, I ensure all of these things are in order before I go back to the other side. Coming back to the horse's left side, or what we even sometimes call their near side, a little bit of that horse language that's good to learn, I'm going to take my latigo strap out of the keeper. This piece here is where we store it so that it also is in a neat and tidy place as we carry the saddle around. Now I'll reach underneath and bring the girth or the singe up to the place where we're going to fasten it. You notice that it did come right here behind her elbow. That's an important part that we want to remember. The saddle is only positioned correctly if we find that our girth or cinch strap is right behind her elbow. Now I'll begin to take the latigo strap and being certain that it is coming from a metal ring to a metal ring to ensure our safety, I can begin to bring this strap up and continue to wrap it from back to front, making certain that it's flat and getting it ready to where we will eventually buckle it off. I like to notice that it is in a good spot. I, it's tight. I haven't tightened it all the way yet, but I have plenty of room to snug that up. If it was already up here close to the ring, then I know that saddle's not going to be tight enough to ensure the safety of the ride. So I've got plenty of space to tighten. I've wrapped it far enough that I know that I'm going to be here and close to where the, the holes are so I can eventually buckle it. I have it all wrapped. I make sure things are straight and then I'll go ahead and give it a little snug. I snug it up just enough to say it's definitely firm, not so tight though that I would make her uncomfortable at this time. Before I mount and in that video on mounting, I'll be sure that we remember to tighten or check that cinch. The rest of the latigo strap goes back up here in its keeper. You'll notice that on this saddle we do have what we call a rear cinch or a 
bucking cinch, they often call it. It's not intended to keep a horse from bucking or have much to do with bucking. That's an old name for it. For most of us, that's a decorative kind of aesthetic piece, but there are types of disciplines where it's important. In roping, it helps secure the saddle against the pressure of the cow or other things. For our purposes, it's kind of decorative, and we're going to remember the important part about a back cinch or bucking cinch is to never fasten it first. You never want to tighten or place your back cinch on before you would have your front cinch. It may seem like common sense, but it's not unusual for someone to do their back cinch first, have the horse shake or they walk away, the horse shakes the saddle off of their body and it's hanging there suspended by this, a sure accident waiting to happen. So after I've secured my front girth, I'm gonna now reach underneath and bring the back cinch, or call it the bucking strap, up here and fasten it just tight enough so I can still slip my hand in, but not so loose that it's gonna hang down where she might get her back foot caught in it during a, an athletic event or move. After I have both the front cinch and the back cinch in place, I can bring my stirrup down and be ready to put the bridle on.